Hello, beautifuls. Hello, all you cool cats and kittens. If you've watched that show, totally obsessed with it. If you haven't, it's crazy. We are on Act 3, Scene 2. I hope your first day of e-learning went well. Um, I'm going to try to go quicker than I did yesterday. I don't want you to have to um, sit here for a half hour to do this, okay? Um, so we start off. It's 2 p.m., 3 p.m. This is Juliet's kind of her room. And she's waiting... For Romeo. Okay. Um, and basically she's saying she's very anxious here. She's saying Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and seen so lovers can do their amorous rites. She's waiting for her wedding night. Um, come civil night, sober and matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match. Okay, so this is a paradox, because she's losing and she's winning at the same time. Alright, so keep in mind that this whole thing is about her wedding night, so she's obviously losing something. Um, and we talked about that maidenhood's is virginity. And so that's what she's talking about. She's losing, but at the same time, she's winning. Um, and so this whole part is kind of about her, her wedding night. Um... Come gentle night, come loving black brown night. Give me right my this kind of part is kind of creepy. Give me my Romeo, and when I shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he'll make the face of heaven so fine. So you get a little bit of foreshadowing here. Okay. Um, and she says, Oh, I have bought the mansion of love. But not possessed it. Meaning she has been married. She's married now. But she hasn't gotten to own the rights of what comes with marriage. Okay. So think about you buy a house. But you can't move in yet. That's what she's saying here. Okay. Um, so she's. Although I'm sold. I have not enjoyed yet enjoyed. So tedious this day. It's like a festival to an impatient child. That has new robes and may not wear them. Think about that when like you buy new shoes before the start of school. And shh. When you buy new schools, shoes before the start of school and you are not allowed to wear them until the first day. And you're like, please, I really want to wear these shoes. That's how she's feeling. Okay. Um, she says, here comes my nurse. Now remember, Juliet has no idea that Romeo just killed Tibble. No idea, right? And so the nurse comes in and she says, are those, are those the cords? And so she throws them down the rope ladder. Um, and, she's, and she's wringing her hands. The nurse is upset. And so she goes, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Now notice that this is a pronoun, and it's extremely vague, okay? She's talking about Tybalt, and Juliet's going to assume it's Romeo. And so she goes, oh, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And so Juliet's like, can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, who would have thought it? Romeo. So she thinks, so the nurse is saying Romeo, but blaming him. And so Juliet thinks Romeo is dead. And she goes, what the devil torments me here? Has Romeo, and that's her first instinct. Did he kill himself? Really? Like, that's your first instinct? I would think, like, man, maybe he got hit by a car. Not during that time period, obviously. But, you know, oh, his her first go-to thought is, no, this guy must have killed himself. And so she says, you know, tell me yes, okay, and I shall poison more. So she's like, and I'll kill myself. Hello. Like, really? Um... And so then the nurse says, I saw the wound, I saw it with my eyes. So again, she's still talking about Tybalt. Okay. I saw it, I saw it. Okay. And so she says, oh, my, you know, this is terrible. She says, my heart. Um, everything is breaking at once. Prison, eyes of their liberty, vile earth, resign in motion here. And Romeo press on one heavy page. So she goes, oh, Tybalt, Tybalt, Tybalt. Okay. Um, and then Juliet's like, what? I'm so confused. What's what's so contrary going on here? What's what's happening? And so she's like, Romeo's dead and Tybalt's dead? My dearest cousin and my dearest lord? What? So she says, Tybalt's gone. So this is actually what's correct. And Romeo is banished. Romeo killed him. He is banished. So then she says, oh. 
oh my goodness, did he kill him? And so she says, yes. Okay. And so now you've got, we talked about this phrase at the beginning. It's another paradox. Remember, paradox is when you have it, some kind of like an oxymoron, but it's within a sentence. It's something that is seemingly untrue. So, O oh, serpent heart hid with a flowering face, beautiful tyrant, fiend, angelical, um, dove feathered raven with a wolvish raven. This beautiful, you're this beautiful, good looking guy. How could you be so horrible inside is what she's saying. Um you know, just the opposite to what thou justly seemed. And that's what the point of this is here. Okay. Um, you know, and here's your book imagery again. Was there ever a book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Okay. In such a gorgeous palace. Again, this is all about being beautiful on outside. Oops, I know you can't see that. Ugly inside. Because, you know, she really knows him so well. It's been like, ah, uh, you know, 24 hours at the most. Okay. So she says, you know, no, no, no. Okay. Shame come to Romeo. Well, then Juliet's like, don't you talk about my husband that way. Blistered be thy tongue. Shut up. She says, that's my husband still. Okay. It's my three hours husband. Okay. And so she says, what a beast I was to, so she blames herself. And she goes, you're going to speak well of the guy that killed your cousin? And so she's like, I can't speak ill of my husband. Um, and she says, I'm your three hours wife. They've been married for three hours. And she says, I've already mangled it. Well, hold on, honey. Um, Juliet, he called you effeminate. He blamed you for the fact that he killed Tybalt. But whatever. Okay. Um, and so she says, you know, my husband lives... Tybalt would have killed him. She just knows, you know, and Tybalt's dead and would have killed, you know, Romeo. And so this is, this is, this is okay. Okay. And she's like, where should I cry? Uh, and then she says later on here, again, Tybalt is dead and Romeo is banished. Banished is worse than 10,000 deaths. Okay. Um, and so she says, Da, 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 da. If you keep going, Romeo is banished. His mother, father, Tybalt were all slain. Romeo is banished. So no limit, no measure bond. So it's the, like end of life for her. Because she can't be with Romeo. Um, and she says, in a, in a word, death. No words will sound. Where's my father? Where's my mother? So they're, they're crying over Tybalt. Okay, and so she says, my tears will be spent when theirs are dry for Romeo's banishment. I'm going to keep crying. So she goes, get those cords. Okay, and so she says, ropes. Okay, you are beguiled. Both you and I for Romeo is exiled. He made you away for highway to my bed, but I am a maid and I died made away. So she's like, I'm going to die a virgin. Uh, and so she's talking to the cords. And so she goes, I'll go to my wedding bed. And death can take me instead. So she's gonna, she'd she's like to kill herself instead. And the nurse is like, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll take the cords and I'll find Romeo and he'll comfort you. And, you know, Romeo will be here tonight. Don't worry. And so she says, okay, good. And then give him this ring and tell him that I love him. And come to take his last farewell. So recap, Juliet's. Waiting for Romeo, excited about her wedding night, finds out Romeo's dead, actually first thinks that Romeo's dead, then finds out he's not, it's Tybalt dead, she's upset, she kind of says he's a terrible per Romeo's a terrible person, then she takes it back, and then now she wants to be with Romeo again, and wants to make sure she gets what she's owed as being a wife, okay? Now... Scene three, we've got Friar Lawrence, right? And this is Friar Lawrence's cell. So this is probably now where we were at before 2 or 3 p.m. This is probably like 3 or 4 p.m. And we are still on Friday. No, why does it say Friday? Okay, we're going to come back to that. Um, 
So she says, Romeo, come forth, thou fearful man. He says, affliction is enamored in thy parts, and you are wedded to calamity. You are married to problems. And then Romeo comes in, and he says, well, you know, what news? What's the prince's doom? Because remember, at this point, he thinks he's dead. He peaced out before the prince said that he should be banished. And he says, you know, I bring you tidings of the prince's doom. Um, what less than doomsday is the prince's doom, meaning death. And he says, a gentler judgment vanished from his lips, not body's death, but body's banishment, meaning you're banished. And now Romeo throws a full out tantrum. Hip banishment, be merciful, say death. Just tell me I'm going to die. For exile is more terror in his luck for much more than death. Do not say banishment. And he says here, you're banished. Like, be patient. Remember that whole, like, this is his tragic flaw. Be patient. Okay? This is a blessing, as he's saying. There's no world without Verona's walls. You know, no. This is banished, and I'm banished from the world. It's like hell itself. And you're calling death banishment. You cut my head off with a golden axe and smile upon me. And he's like, this is terrible. And he's like, you ungrateful child, rude unthankfulness. Okay, our law calls for death, but the prince turned death to banishment. It's mercy. He's saying this is good. Okay. And remember that Romeo's like, no. Right? And, and it's true, right? You'd rather be banished than dead. Not Romeo. He'd rather be dead. And he goes, it's torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives. And every cat and dog, and they all can look upon her. But no, Romeo may not. Okay. And then he says, you know, more courtship lifts in flies than Romeo. A fly that can land upon Juliet's hand and basically kiss her lip is, has more of a relationship than I have. Okay. Um, but no, Romeo can't. He's banished. Okay, and he says, I must fly. Can you put the dogs away because I'm going to go all again? Just leave the dogs. They're okay. They, they're they barking because mommy's talking to the camera. Okay. Um, and he says, and you say that exile is not death? And and then, he, then look at this. He goes, do you have any poison or sharp ground knife or means of sudden death? Because he wants to kill himself. Okay. And he says, oh, friar, you know, you use this word. How many tends it have your heart being divine goes like professor. Okay. And you mangle me with the word banished. And friar, Ma friar Lawrence goes, you are crazy. Listen to me. And he goes, I'm not listening to you if you speak of banishment. And he says, I will give you protection to keep that word off. Okay. And comfort you even though you're banished. And he goes, banished? Okay, no, all right, he's being really being a spoiled brat, okay, um, unless banishment can displant a town and reverse a prince's doom, it helps not talk no more, and he tells him to shut up, now remember, like, Friar Lawrence has helped him out, Friar Lawrence has gone against the rules, Friar Lawrence married them when he wanted to, and now he's just being really disrespectful, not to mention, he's harboring a fugitive right now, he's, he's got Romeo at his, at his house or his cell, and he shouldn't be holding on to him. And he says, oh, I see mad men have no ears. And he goes, how should they when wise men have no eyes? These are insults to each other. Okay, he's saying, you're blind. And he's like, so he goes, well, let me dispute you. Okay, and he goes, you can't talk what you don't feel. You don't know what it's like to be in love. Okay, we were an hour murdered, uh, an hour married, and then I'm a murderer, and then I'm banished. Okay, again, impulsiveness. Okay, and he goes... You know, then maybe you could speak if you understood this, but I'm going to throw my, I'm going to tear my hair and throw myself on my, on the ground as I do now. He literally puts himself on the ground and throws a tantrum. He's crying and wailing like a baby. Okay. And he goes, I'm going to pretend that I'm in the grave. And then, so then you hear a knock. Okay. And then somebody's knocking and he goes, you got to hide yourself. And he goes, no. And then the knock again. And he goes, listen, they're knocking. Romeo, stand up. Get up. Okay? Stand up. And the knock. And he goes, run to my study. Because remember, Friar Lawrence can get in serious trouble for having him there. Okay? And then he's like, who is knocking so hard? What's your will? So it's the nurse. 
she says, I come from Lady Juliet. Okay, welcome. And then the nurse says, how is how's my lady's lord? And so she says, he says, there on the ground with his own tears made drunk. He's crying and crying and crying. And so she, he says, oh, she's just like that too. Even in my mistress's case. Um, so she's crying too. Again, hashtag made for each other. Yep, oh, Roomba's getting ready to go. Okay. Um, and she lies on the ground, blubbering and weeping and weeping and blubbering. And she says to Romeo, stand up and be a man. And for Juliet's sake. Okay. And so she says, sir, death's the end of it all. And he says, how do you speak of Juliet? How is it with her? Does she not think of me a murderer? So what does Juliet think? Okay. And what does she say of our canceled love? And she says nothing, but she weeps and weeps and cries on her bed and cries Tybalt and calls and cries and falls down again. So, again, she's crying and weeping and crying and weeping. We can put a little... Crying and weeping and crying. She's got to have some hair on her nose or something. Ugh, she's ugly. Okay. Um, and she, he says as if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun. Remember that fire powder we talked about before? So you've got that imagery again of explosive. Okay. Did murder her in that earth, that the name's cursed hand murdered a Kingsman. And then he says, tell me friar, what vile part of this anatomy of my body does my name lodge? Tell me. And I may sack the hand, the hateful mansion. So he pulls out his dagger, okay, and he says, "Tell me, where does her, my name lie?" And I will just stab it out to make it better. I don't know. And he says, "Hold your desperate hand. Are you a man? Thy form cries that thou art. Your tears are womanish. They are wild acts in a reasonable fury beast, unseemingly woman in a seeming man, ill-seeming beast and seeming both." Okay. Um, and he says, you have amazed me. By holy order, I thought you of disposition better tempered. How, didn't you slay Tybalt? You, would you slay yourself and thy, slay thy lady in thy life? So if you kill yourself, kills Juliet too. Okay. Um, and he says, and, and this is all, again, about the whole concept of that this is a religious man, and so he's telling him, if you kill yourself, if you commit suicide, you will never be with her, okay? You kill your relationship in the afterlife with her, okay? And so then what happens is he says, um, since birth and heaven and earth, all three meet. So this is their religious perspective, okay? And you would lose all this. And he says... Five, five, that shame is shape, love the with blah, 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 blah. Okay, and so he says, your noble shape is but a form of wax, digressing from the valor of, valor of a man, okay? Thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury. Sorry, they're all being chit-chatty. I'm almost done, so we're almost done, guys. Killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish, thy wit, thy ornament, shape. So he's saying, you're not being a man. You look like a man, but you're not acting like one, okay? Um... And he says, you need to rouse up, be a man. Juliet is alive, okay? And you need to be, understand that this is bigger than just you, okay? And he goes, are you happy? Kill Tybalt would have killed you, but you killed him. And he goes, are you happy? The law that threatened death becomes thy friend and is turning to exile. There, are thou happy? You can see that. Are you happy? Are you happy? And he says, a pack of blessing lights upon your back. Happiness courts the best array, okay? But you're behaving like a sullen wench. You pout upon thy fortune, that destiny, okay, thy, and thy love. He says, go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Go to her chamber, hence, and comfort her. But don't stay till the watch be set, because you can't pass. You have to go to Mantua. You have to leave. But go tonight. Have your wedding night. Go in there. Do everything that you're supposed to do as a husband. But then you need to leave in the morning and go to Mantua. Okay? And you will live there until we find a time. Now, keep in mind that Romeo is extremely impatient, but he's got to be patient. Okay? When we find a time, you'll blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, Beg pardon of the prince and call thee back. Okay, we will. So this is the plan. Okay. 
And then you'll come back and everything will be better with 20,000 times more joy. Okay. And he says, go nurse, commend me to thy lady and bid her hasten all the bed, which heavy sorrow makes the map. Romeo is coming. And so she says, oh, I could have stayed here all night and listened to how smart you are and how advisable you are. Now, of course, I'm almost finished and they leave the house. Can you believe this? I hope they weren't too distracting. I'm sorry. Okay. And so Romeo says, do bid sweet prepare to chide. And he says, here, she says, here's your ring. And that, you know, that the Juliet set and he, she, he says, you better hurry. It's growing very late. And then Romeo is like, I am so comforted by this. I am just so happy. Everything's better. I'm going to have my, my wedding night. Life will be so much better. Okay. Okay. And he says, you better hurry. Make sure that you get out of there in the morning at the break of day. Go to Mantua. I'll find your man, meaning I'll find your servant. Okay. And he'll give you signals from time to time. And then we'll let you know. And he says, it's late. Farewell. And he says, but that the joy past joy calls out on me. If it were a grief, so brief to part with thee. Farewell. So Romeo is so happy at the end of this. It's super positive. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Um, so tomorrow I will, I'm going to actually record tomorrow's lesson today when it's quiet when my kids are doing quiet time. So I apologize for all the background noise, but I wanted to get this posted as early as I could this morning for you all. Um, make sure you respond to the attendance question. And I think my attendance question is incorrect I think I posted the wrong one I've got to go back and fix that so if you answered the one about Juliet's fears I goofed I believe so um, I will fix that hope you have a blessed day I will catch you all message me if you have any issues I'll be on the zoom call at 11 there is a new password the password is nickel all lowercase and um, I will talk to you guys soon